Welcome to the wonderful world of printing and painting with thickened mordants and natural dyes. The first thing we're going to do is mix a bright or aluminum based print paste. So we'll need guar gum, soda ash, alum, white vinegar, a mask, and gloves. To get started, we are going to measure out 20 grams of aluminum sulfate or potassium aluminum sulfate. And this is a metal salt that brightens natural dyes. We'll also use soda ash and mix in 10 grams of soda ash directly to that alum that we just measured out. We're going to measure out white vinegar, 168-ish grams of white vinegar in a separate container. And once that's measured out, we'll slowly add it to our alum soda ash mix. And you'll notice it'll start to bubble, so this is where science fair volcanoes <laughs> come into play. So stir as that solution is bubbling slowly, just keep adding in the vinegar. If you do it all at once, you will have an explosion on your hands. So work slowly, work patiently, a little bit at a time. Then we'll add our guar gum as our thickener. And it's just two grams of guar gum. I'm also adding this to a separate container to add to my new alum soda vinegar mix. And we're going to add this in slowly because guar gum thickens up pretty quickly. So just a little at a time, and then we'll stir that in. If you're doing a large amount of this print paste, so you can level up this recipe by the ratio any amount. An immersion blender that is only dedicated to natural dyes and metal salts would work really well here too to mix in that guar gum. So we'll just let this sit for about 30 minutes and then we are ready to print with our print paste. We'll go over some really simple application techniques for our print paste. So simply painting with a paintbrush works really well. It's also really fun to screen print with the print paste, and I love to use painter's tape. You can use it, as I'm showing you here, just to make really simple stripes. Um, you can also cut directly into painter's tape or any kind of like vinyl sticker to create your own stencil and make sure that's really secure. You also wanna wear gloves when you're screen printing, just in case any of the metal salts touch your hands with aluminum it won't stain your hands, but when we do do the iron, which I will show in another video, it does stain your hands. So when screen printing, you just want to lay down a bead. I'm using a mud tool as a card or a squeegee, but you could also use a traditional screen printing squeegee. Old health insurance cards work really well. Some different tools you might just have around the house that you can screen print with. I also love to use painter's tape directly on the fabric. I find that it's easier than registering the screen itself to line up those stripes. And you can also reuse this painter's tape too. So let it dry, let the print paste dry, and then reuse it on other fabrics or maybe around the house. <laughs> and in this case, I would just paint with my print paste and everywhere that we apply it obviously will attract the natural dye because this is a thickened mortal, <laughs> mordant print paste. Um, so the pigments in the dye bath will actually bond to the print paste. We can block print with it, stamp with it, it's a really versatile tool in natural dyes. You can also print with weeds or plants or leaves from your garden. We'll let our print paste dry on the fabric. It's best to do this out in the sun, just let it air dry, and then we will add it to a dung bath. And the dung bath is 10 grams of calcium carbonate per liter of warm water. And what you're doing here is just removing the gum from the actual fabric. So all that's left on your fabric after it's dunged 
is the metal salt and the soda ash and that's what's going to draw your dye pigments into your fiber. So once it's dry you can then add it directly to any mordant dye bath. So this will not work with indigo dye but it does work with every other mordant natural dye and then you're left with a beautiful work of art.